Caitlin Clark being snubbed, snubbed from the Olympic roster. As a rookie in any sport, you want to earn your right to be in a position to be able to represent represent your country. Because everything is would be based off what she did in college, and that has nothing to do once you make it to WNBA. Your resume, it, it you have to complete your resume there. You represent us as a country. I, I, I would think so. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? If they had picked Caitlin Clark, pick her, let her gain that experience, and she's going to be the one in three, four, five years who's going to be one of the leaders of that USA team. So give her that experience. It, it was a no-brainer, but I, I think you picked that 12th spot for the future. And that's why they call her Lady Legend, okay? She is a legend. So y'all listening to experts and analysts, but we got a legend right here talking the truth, Nancy Lieberman. I think the WNBA is going to do here. And now we're four years behind for not putting these girls on the team. Now, I agree with you. Both of them should have been on that because what you're saying now is that I'm gearing up for the next four years. These girls, you're right, they ain't been on the team. Guess what? The, this is no better opportunity to bring in some younger talent to see how it's done. And that's how tradition is brought, it's, it's passed down. You know, I had to jump in the conversation, okay? It's, it's on fire right now. But here's the thing, right? There's so many things that are being said about this. So many, so many narratives that are absolutely just wrong. First of all, almost every major number one pick was on that Olympic team. Okay, Diana Taurasi's on the team. Candace Parker was on the team as a rookie. Brianna Stewart was on the team as a rookie. You know, if Maya Moore, if it was the Olympic year, Maya Moore would have been on the team as a rookie. If the Olympics was there when Sue Bird, Sue Bird would have been on there as a rookie. So this is not about, uh, okay, this is not about what you do on the WNBA level. It is not about that. Because if it was, you wouldn't have had these young players on the team. USA Basketball has always had youth on the team. That's why everybody's been saying they don't have anybody younger than 26 because they normally do. It is not, you know, um, different or off or anything to have, you know, number one picks or shall we say players that we think are going to be, you know, are going to be our future. They get them out there. Right. They get him out there. Listen to what Dan Tarazi has to say here. here. And tell me if I'm wrong. Were, didn't, weren't you named to the roster as soon as you graduated? Right. You were young. Yeah. I, yeah. After I won three national championships in a row, I was named. Jeez. Um, you know, when I talk about Lisa and Cheryl and Don and Tina, I mean, I was right there watching them, their every move, the way they prepared, um, how serious they took it. Diana just said some very, very positive things. I hope y'all picking up what she's putting down. First of all, let's address the first thing she said when the, the, the young lady said, hey, you were young. You, fresh out of college, going into the Olympics too, right? And what does Diana Tarazi say? Yeah, after I won three national championships. Hold on to that in your head. Hold on to that in your head, right? But then what is the second thing that she says? You know, yeah, they brought me around. You know, I had veterans so I can learn from them. I can glean from them. You know, I can see their focus and what it takes, right? That is the whole point. Let me tell you the more sad thing about it was, right? What Diana Tarazi said. You know, she said, you know, she was picked because she won three national championships. I told you, hold that in your head. She won three national championships in a row. And that's how she got, got on the Olympic team. And I'm like, okay, but, but let, let everybody else tell it. Caitlin hasn't proven herself on the WNBA level. That's why she shouldn't be on the team. Well, the crazy thing about it is Diana Taurasi hadn't proven herself on the WNBA level either. That is the point. Diana just said out of her own mouth that it was what she did in college. So if it's what she did in college, why would Caitlyn not be on the team? Song that Whitney said, I believe that Caitlyn is our future. Right? If you, that, that, that is really how it goes, guys. But if you really believe that Caitlyn is your future, just like they believe that Diana Taurasi was their future, just like they believe Sue Bird and these guys were their future, if they really believe that Caitlyn Clark was their future, she would be on that team. Players that come straight from college, they believe in you, they know that you're going to be the future, and they have you at the end of that bench. You may not play, but they, you, they will have you at the end of the bench. From the swing caches, just check this out. Again, Dawn Staley, the veteran. And the United States has regained the lead. So in, in, that, in case you didn't see it, that was Diana Tawazi on the bench during the big game. She wasn't in the game. That was Sue Bird. She wasn't in the game. That was Swing Cash. She wasn't in the game, right? But they wanted them to be there because they believed that they were the future of USA basketball. Okay? So we got to stop saying this. Oh, well, no, you know, the playing time and this and that. And here's the other thing. Well, Caitlin, she doesn't have the experience. She doesn't have the experience. Check this out. Hey, we're outstanding. Hey. 2019, the USA raised their trophy again. This is given to them by uh, Bill Cody. Oh, so it looks like Caitlyn does have a little bit of experience. People are really talking like Caitlyn ain't never been nowhere outside of the United States of America. 
People are talking like Caitlin Clark ain't never played against nobody besides WNBA teams and college teams. No, she's played against um, um, other Olympians. She has. Okay, so we're looking at all these different things because these are the different things that people say. Well, no, um, Caitlin Clark, she doesn't have the experience. What is the other asinine thing? Asinine one, asinine two. That, I got that from Skip, right? Asinine one, asinine two, asinine three, asinine four. Oh, she doesn't have the chemistry. She doesn't have the chemistry with how? Do, and I'm like, how do you know that? How do you know what player she doesn't does have chemi- doesn't does not have chemistry with? How do you know that? Like these are just so ridiculous reasons so why they don't have Caitlyn on the Olympic team, man. They're trying to play us. They're trying to play mind games with our mind, man. Then you even saw uh, Ocho Cinco say she ain't earned the right being a WNBA player. She ain't earned the right. Okay, check this out. The reason Caitlin Clark was left off of Team USA is supposedly because she is not one of the best 12 players in the WNBA. However, she is currently outperforming some of the guards on this team, including Diana Taurasi. Also outperforming Kelsey Plum in nearly every category except for points. And is truly neck and neck with Sabrina. Not to mention two of the women on this roster, Brittany Griner and Chelsea Gray, are coming back from injury. So the narrative that Caitlin Clark simply wasn't good enough to make this roster is completely false. Which proves the point that making Team USA is not solely based on skill. So if it's not solely based on skill, why wouldn't you bring Caitlin Clark? She said a whole bar right there, right? But let's look at the last part she says. It's not just about skill. It's not just about skill. Because if it was, you... you there, if, there, if it was just about skill, there is a massive argument. That's why people are arguing. That's why I'm making this video right now that you can argue Caitlin Clark deserves to be on that team. None of these guards that are out playing Caitlin Clark. And think about everything Caitlin Clark is going through right now. She's on a trash team, right? Her coach doesn't know how to play her. She's getting defended like, you know, uh, p- players are defending her like she's Shaq and Kobe at one time. You know what I'm saying? Like, she's the only player on the court completely disrespecting the rest of her teammates because they don't see any of the rest of them as threats. And she's still putting up 16, 17, you know, five rebounds, you know, six assists a game as a rookie. So you cannot argue that based on that, she does not, um, she should make the team. But what she said, I love what the young lady said there. If it's not just based on that, and guys, it isn't. What you got to understand about USA basketball is very biased. You know, um, there's favoritism, there's bias and stuff all through it. Let's look at this other situation right here. Check this out. Talk to me about your relationship with USA basketball. I don't have one. Um, yeah. Just tell me and then I won't waste my time. Like if that was the stipulations and I went to a camp, I got a triple double at the camp was I think first or second in scoring. Like it wasn't on the court. <laughs> yeah. So if it's me as an individual, as a person, I'm not even being judged off of how I'm playing. What do you think you're judged off of? I don't think I personally fit. I don't think Gina wanted me on the team. So I think it's one of those things where it's like, cool, like, just tell me. And then don't, you know, beat around the bush. Like, just tell people. Candace was looked at as one of the best players in the world. And she didn't make the team. And she told you why. Because she don't think Gina wanted her on the team. You got to understand those things matter, right? And, and we've already heard Sho Reeves speaking out against Caitlin Clark. We've already heard Diana Tarazi speaking out against Caitlin Clark, right? All these people. Here's the sad part about it. Caitlin has not said anything. She has not disrespected anybody. She has not disrespected the game. She has not disrespected. She has shown nothing but honor. Honor to her honor to her, her team. The other, like everything. All she's done is that. But if they don't like you, if they don't like certain things about you, you, you will get left off the team even though uh, you're worthy of it. And as you want me to tell you, because see, they won't tell you. Do you want me to tell you basically what this is? They don't respect Caitlin's game. You know, I got to take a description, man, because I think a lot of what we're dealing with, too, is jealousy and envy and all these other type of things. And for the, you know, the, the word of God got answers for everything, man. So let's go look at some of these. Proverbs 14 and 30. Is, oh, a peaceful mind gives life to the body, but jealousy rots the bones. James 3.16. It says, wherever there is jealousy and selfish ambition. I feel like that's a lot of what we're dealing with, you know, with Cam, you know, Caitlin not being able to be on the team and within even the WNBA. When, wherever there's jealousy and selfish ambition. There is disorder and everything that is evil. Look at this Philippians 2 and 3. It says, I do, do not do anything for selfish purpose, but with humility and think of others as better than yourselves. And you know, I thought this was, I wanted to end really with this scripture here because that kind of describes Caitlin, right? It, like it absolutely describes Caitlin. You know, do not do anything in selfish purpose. Where can you show that, that Caitlin's done that? But, but with humility, Caitlin walks in humility. Think of others better than yourselves, like the way she honors. So we, we, we had to get some scripture up in here, man. We always got to get scripture. One thing that you'll learn that we can learn from Caitlin Clark right now is it's hard when you're the first to do it. A lot of times when you're the first to do it, you get the worst, right? Caitlin is playing it in a way that we've never seen a woman basketball player play. 
and she's actually being penalized for it. What USA Basketball is really saying is, Caitlin, we don't the way you play. I mean, you cool, yeah. You you know you get the numbers and stuff, but that we don't need that. That's not what we want. We don't you know we don't need you shooting logo threes from like. And what they're doing is they're belittling her game. Like Kate, like, like that's really the only thing Caitlin can do is shoot logo threes. That tells me maybe you don't know what you think you know. Do you even watch her play? I didn't say she's being penalized for the way she plays the game. Nobody wants to actually say that. But that's what it is, right? What did, what did they, what, uh, the um, vice president, uh, Zadi or whatever it is that said, we're not worried about popularity, we're worried about trying to win. So it's an indication that the only thing that Caitlin brings to the game, or the only thing that Caitlin brings to the Olympics is popularity. The only thing that she would bring is her fans. Guys, that is a straight dis and disrespect on Caitlin Clark's game. They don't believe in her game. I'm going to say it again. Sometimes when you're the first, it's the worst, Right? Because a lot of people, they don't, they don't see your value. They don't see what God placed on the inside of you. They don't see your gift, your talent, your ability. They don't see the, um, the what's on the inside of you. They don't see it. Or if they see it, they don't get it. Or, you know what I'm saying? And so they go and they try to knock you off. All this stuff that's going on, man, all these, all these players, they're just trying to knock Caitlin Clark off. They're trying to knock her off because they don't actually understand it. You know, you, they don't understand what's on the inside of her. Then they go and say it's the fans. But guys, it's the fans. It's Caitlin Clark's fans. Well, I'm a Caitlin Clark fan. I'm proud of it. I'm proud of it. And you ain't gonna sit here and come up and try to tell me I don't know what's going on. I've been watching the I've been watching the Olympics since 2004. What you want to know? So don't come and be like, "Oh, it's the fans. It's the fans." No, I wish these people would just tell you what it is. We don't believe in the way she plays the game. She is a superstar. She is electrifying. She is fun to watch. Let me tell y'all straight up and down what this is and nobody ever wants to talk about it. With all due respect to Andrea Carter, all due respect to uh, China Gumake, but th- I-, I keep telling y'all, just because they got a platform don't mean they're telling you the truth. It doesn't mean they're giving you the truth. Here's the reality of it, okay? People, I said this before in another video, people don't want to deal with Caitlin Clark's shine. They don't want her to shine. Here's the other thing, right? Very grudgingly, you hear, I hear this over and over and over and over with WNBA players, some of them who have not even won yet. Like I would have been on Stewie, like winning four championships, like no shade, but she didn't, Caitlin didn't win, right. you know, like right. Stewie won, right. you know, like right. Stewie won four times in a row. And here we go. And that's Satu. I don't know if you guys know, she played for the Dallas Wings, right? But she said, and again, she has not won anything. So she's taking shots at Caitlin. Caitlin is actually a better player for what she accomplished in college. No, just like she said, no shade, no shade to her. Go look her up. She played for Oregon. Never won a national championship, and she has yet to win a WNBA. She has yet to sniff a WNBA championship. So really, right now, Caitlyn is still in a better position than her. And Caitlyn was the number one pick, okay? But this is what I'm talking about where you see that. Okay, let, let's go back to what she said because this is so in- This is what I'm talking about when it comes to the, um, the shade. The shade or the, the – because, guys, if you have shade, there can't be shine, right? So all the shade – that continues to come at Caitlin Clark because they don't want her to shine. What does she say? What does Satu say there? Man, but if if, if it was on Brianna Stewart, Brianna Stewart won four championships. You just answered your own question. Well, how old was Caitlin Clark? Let's see. Brianna Stewart, because I told you I know this, I've been following. Okay. Brianna Stewart won her last national championship in 2016. Okay. It was the last time she played. Uh, okay, it's 2024. Caitlin Clark is 22. Y'all do the math. I think that has Caitlin at, at, like at 14. Was she even in high school yet? Who was going and winning all those championships? Caitlin Clark went in your way then. Caitlin Clark went in the way then. So you need to ask the question: Why is that? Why is that the Brianna Stewart could go win four national championships in a row and nobody care? Why is that? A lot of these players already have the answer if they were just to open up their eyes and see. Guys, it, it don't work that way. Nobody wants to admit that Caitlin Clark is just fun to watch. Just because you win doesn't mean people want to tune in and watch you play. I mean that you're fun to watch play. I, it baffles my mind that people don't understand this. That people don't get it. They do not get it, right? You want to bring that up? That's a great idea. But sis, sis, bring that up. Why is it that Brianna Stewart didn't get the attention? She won four in a row. Because nobody was watching. Because you may have been winning, but people weren't watching because you weren't fun to watch play. To the, the, the whole thing about the Olympics. This is what I'm talking about. The problem with it is, when it comes to the Olympics, is p- nobody will tell you this, guys. If, if, if there's 50 people that watch my video versus thousands and thousands of people that watch the other videos, they're lying to you. I'm going to tell you the truth of what it is. Caitlin Clark is a superstar. And she is, Caitlin Clark is polarizing. And see, this is what they don't want to tell you. This is what they don't want to tell you. Caitlin Clark is polarizing in the sense of that the, w, the WNBA and women's college basketball have never had a player like this. So, so they don't know. Right. They need. And this is why I said they need to come out and say the truth. Just go and say, you know what, guys, 
Caitlin Clark is polarizing and, and we don't know how to deal with that. So maybe we fumbled the ball a little bit. Yeah, but we're trying to figure this thing out too. We've never had a woman basketball player have this much influence over the whole entire world. We've never had it. That's what they need to come out and say, right? Here's the other thing they need to come out and say. Tell you sending a message. They are absolutely sending a message and not to just Caitlin Clark, but to also Angel Reese, to, to also Cameron Brink, to this rookie class. And with they, y'all ain't really that great. Y'all ain't really that, we don't, y'all ain't really that great. They're expecting this rookie class to be perfect. This rookie class isn't even one of the best rookie classes in the last 10 years. But they've been put out to be that. This is the draft right here that Gino is hinting at. I, I'm assuming, right? So 2016 draft, Brianna Stewart, Anna Copper, John Quill Jones, um, and Brianna Stewart. Okay, but we can still say Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese, Cameron Brink, um, Camille Cardoza, like this, this draft class is not better than the draft class of, th of this year, 2024. So again, you, what are we saying, man? Gino, you know, says out of his own mouth, this, this ain't even the best draft class in the last 10 years. Again, he's referring to his three players that got drafted, but only really one is a superstar and the best, the rest of them are barely hanging on, you know, on this professional level, you know? So again, you're seeing the shots that are being taken, not just at Caitlin, but this draft class. And, and some of the, this is the thing. This is what Caitlin Clark does, boy. And I love this. So I love this woman right here. And I hope she stays true to herself. What I love about it is Caitlin Clark, she elevates everything around her, but that elevation may actually feel like, feel like a challenge. Right. And so because it looks like a challenge, it can be looked at like it's wrong, but she elevates. What is Caitlyn doing? Exposing a lot of people's hearts right now, man. Straight up and down. Exposing a lot of people's hearts. A lot of WNBA players miss the mark. They completely miss the mark. They probably want to take shots at Caitlyn Clark. But she goes and gets on them. What does she say? What does Caitlyn Clark do? She don't do nothing. I'm trying to do it like that. She don't do nothing. What she do? She don't do nothing. She don't do nothing. What she do? All she do is shoot threes. Like, what else she do? What else, like, what else, she, what else she bring to the game, though? That's what, that's, what she, that's what she tweeted, right? Wouldn't tell the media that, but that's what she tweeted. Kayla Clark is the first that we've seen play like a Steph Curry. And here's the other thing that I've been saying over and over again when these players are like, N I sh show my highlights, too. You know, whenever you watch basketball, you don't watch basketball players to see them struggle, do you? Do you? Do you? You don't watch them to, um, like, dang, man, I'm going in. I'm about to go watch this dude, man. He play in a way to make the game look hard. He play in a way to make the game look rough. Yeah, I want to go and watch that from in, in my free time, in my pastime. That is enjoyable. No, it's not. And people will not say it, but that is the reality of most WNBA players. As good as they are, they don't play gracefully and they don't make the game look pretty and they don't make the game look easy. What do you hear people say all the time? We're watching the finals right now with the Boston Celtics and the, uh, and, um, the Dallas Mavericks. What do you hear with Dantich? And it really makes the game look so easy. When Kyrie's going to the rim, boom, boom. He makes the game look easy. It makes it, he makes the game look graceful. Like he, nobody wants to admit that. Most WNBA players' games, when you watch, it looks hard. It looks like, dang, they really look like they, they look like they struggling. Some of the, the shots that they make, it's like, do y'all ever work on your shooting? You do? Why is it that you're hitting the side of the rim? Why is it that, you've aired the, that you have three air balls in this game, but you work on your game? But can I be real? Can I tell y'all the truth? I told y'all I try to be a truth teller. Most WNBA players look like they don't even work on their game. Not all. Not all. But most. Of the WNBA players look like when they played the game, they are struggling. When Kayla shoots it, you think it's going, and you're like, dang, she missed it. And that is the difference. When Steph Curry shoots, you think he's, you think he's making it. Not hoping he makes it. You're thinking like, oh, that's going in. That's going in. That's going in. And people don't understand that that is the difference that Caitlin Clark brings. When she goes and shoots her shot, Caitlin has a beautiful game. Her passing. She has a beautiful game. Caitlin does not look like the game. Look, Caitlin does not play in a way that it looks like the game is hard for her. And this is what players will not admit. And ugh, I'm going deep for a second. And I believe some of it is, the reason why it is, is because a lot of these women basketball players, they try to do stuff that they're not athletically built to do. And so they come off looking, you know what I'm saying, un like they have no balance or their shots here because they're going and they're trying to do stuff that their body is telling them they can't do. But they go and try to do it, you know what I'm saying? And then it land, it, it hits this and it hits that and it looks like this. It looks a mess. Maya Moore, right? Some of those type of players, they are smooth. Their game is smooth. I told you, they feel like they, they look like they play like they're one with the air. Like, they, you know what I'm saying? The ball in the air obeys them. That, but that is very small in the WNBA. And this is what people don't get. Well, I don't understand. What's, what, what's all the hype with Caitlin? Or like, what does she do? Go play like her. Go shoot like her.
Caitlin shoots, and every time Caitlin shoots, I think it's going in. And I'm not saying that all WNBA players they need to aspire to be Caitlin Clark. No, that's not what I'm saying. We see, you know, Caitlin kind of having some of her struggles in the WNBA, but that's all a part of the plan. They want to make Caitlin Clark look as regular as possible. But if a lot of the other WNBA players played the way Caitlin Clark played, the WNBA itself will be on a whole nother level. Players that want to come and hate on Caitlin, y'all need to go work on your game so that your game looks fun to watch. Let me go here for a second. When we talk about all, like, all championships are not equal, first of all. All championships are not equal. Let, when we look at it, and this is the thing, the other thing I want to ask. Does this only apply to women and not the men? Because I don't hear people saying LeBron didn't win on national championships. He's not a GOAT. I don't hear people saying that. You know why? Because majority of the NBA players have not won a national championship. They haven't. Steph Curry, you look at some of the best in the game right now. There's only a select few NBA players that have actually won national championships. Anthony Davis. So is this a WNBA thing, first of all? Like, you got to win on the college level to be great. So that means LeBron James ain't great because LeBron James didn't even go to college. So what are you saying about what are you saying about players like that? Brianna Stewart won four national championships in a row. She got to play with the same players for four years, and she's playing at UConn. What Caitlin did is put a team that would have never you would have never even been talking about them if it was not for her. What we got to look at is Caitlin took a team in the Iowa Buckeyes. And took them to back-to-back championship games. People even admitted, man, Iowa, they got the hardest road this year. I don't know why they gave them such a high seed and gave them the hardest road. Why didn't LeBron say that one day? I don't know why we want to take the hardest road. I don't know why the man above gives me the hardest road, but it's nothing the man above. Don't put you in situations that you can't handle. And I don't mind me. They're saying this is what he want me to do. When in his press conference, I don't know why God gave me the hardest road. But I succeeded. I got the victory, right? So they didn't win the national championship, but they got back to the championship game with majority of the players that will never be drafted. Like, are you kidding? Are you kidding me? Do we realize that Kate Martin's in the WNBA right now because of Caitlin Clark? Do we realize that? Kate Martin didn't even know she was going to be drafted. But people got to see her game on the highest level. You cannot win, but literally change the game. And that is what Caitlin Clark is doing. You have players on all levels. Look at that. Look, just, can I be real with y'all? At JaVale McGee, which I like JaVale McGee. What, he has what, two? He has more championships than Giannis Antetokounmpo. But who has had the greater impact on the game? He has more championships than Dame Lillard. But who has had more impact on the game? That's why we, th- th- this focus, this, this, this unhealthy focus of champions, uh, championships, it belittles the other ones that were great and didn't win because you're playing a team sport. You're playing a team sport. Caitlin can't play all five positions. And here's the other thing why I say this is this whole championship and you know, it determines whether or not you're great. If we're looking at it like that, most people will put, Le- say, LeBron's the GOAT. Well, how is LeBron the GOAT if Jordan has more championships? I actually think Kobe has more championships than LeBron. Why isn't Kobe in the conversation? And then we go even further than that. Just talking about championships, why is Bill Russell not ever in the conversation? I think he won 11. That's way more than Bron. That's way more than Kobe. RIP to the late great Kobe. That's even way more than Jordan himself. Why? This is why I don't believe in the championship conversation. I don't believe in it. Because it's, it's inconsistent. It's been proven to be inconsistent. Then they're, they're, here's this is why I say this this narrative of championships is so silly because if we're really talking about championships, there's no need to debate because most players, you know, you look at it on the NBA level. Bill, like I said, Bill Russell has 11. Debate over. <laughs> Who's the greatest? Bill. Russell. Debate over. Because it's more than that, guys. It's more than that, and we know that. Example, what I'm talking about, we talk about, you know, who's the GOAT and, you know, it should be based on championships. Check this out here. Okay, we know we got UConn. They come with them, okay? They stay coming with them. And, and this is ranking the, the I think, I don't know, the top 10 uh, UConn players. Check out this list here. So, number one, should not come as a surprise to people. It is Diana Taurasi. Okay, we're not going to get into all that. We're just going to go. Boom. What's the next one? Maya Moore, number two. Mm, this is interesting, right? Boom. We go to there. Brianna Stewart, number three. This is what I want to look at. Again, when we talk about championships, Brianna Stewart has the most national championships. She has more than Maya. She has more than Diana. Why is she not the number one player? And if you go and ask people, you ask around, Diana Taurasi is the GOAT of, of, I mean, you could argue women's college basketball uh, as a whole, but she's definitely the GOAT of UConn women's basketball. Why is that, though? 
Brianna Stewart won more championships, right? So shouldn't Brianna Stewart be the GOAT? No, because there's more to it. You know what? Let's go back here. You know what you're seeing with Diana Taurasi being number one and Maya Moore being number two ranked? But why is Brianna Stewart number three? And it's like, no, it's not in order. No, it is in order. One, two, three. And this is what I've been talking about. Because the reason why Diana Taurasi and Maya Moore are first and second, because it's not just about how many championships you win. It's the impact. If you go back and watch these two players in Maya Moore and in Diana Taurasi were way more impactful than anything Brianna Stewart did. Brianna Stewart, won, this is what I mean. You can win and not impact a point. It's not just based on championships. It's based on impact. And nobody, I don't care how much they go and cry. J Justin Timberlake said, cry me a wiver. Tupac said, shed so many tears. However, however you want to do it, Caitlin Clark has been the most impactful women's basketball player ever. And that's why she should be in the co -con go conversation. That's why she should be looked on to uh, be on that Olympic team for those type of reasons. And that's why we want to go and belittle all this. What about Reggie Miller? Reggie Miller never won a championship. I, I hate when we go and do that because it, it belittles what these people actually went. If you didn't have a Reggie Miller, guys, I don't know if you would have saw a Ray Allen or even a Steph Curry today. Reggie Miller, I, Allen Iverson. That man never wanted, he, he really reminds me of Caitlin Clark. That's who Caitlin Clark reminds me of is Allen Iverson. Where you go and pack the game and change the game in such a way, but you don't, you get almost there, but not all the way there. But you have changed the game forever. And that's one thing that you can look at it and you can say from Caitlin Clark. You can say she don't have no national championships, but you know what she did do? She has changed the game forever. There's a lot of players in the WNBA that have won national championships and you can't say that about them. And that's why I think a lot of this hate comes from because, they, you know, we want to flex our muscle when we get immature. We want to flex our muscle when we get insecure. And, and this is what I'm saying. It's so in people's heads. You can have Satu talk about somebody else's challenge, uh, championships and a measure to Caitlin Clark and she hasn't won any herself. It's so in the head of people. We saw Jay Williams. Nah, Caitlin ain't that big. She ain't won no championships. But a lot of these people that go and say this stuff, how are you actually changing the game? And that's the issue, guys. That is the threat. Is that Caitlin Clark is not getting these championships and she's changing the game. Allen Iverson didn't get the chance. He got almost there, got to the finals, but he changed the game. And that's what people are threatened by when it comes to Caitlin. They don't want Caitlin going to the Olympics changing the game. No, we want it. We want it. This is the thing you start to realize with the WNBA. They like it. They, they like their shades closed. They like the curtains down. And what Caitlin Clark is doing is making them open up them shades and, you know, and open up them curtains and things are getting exposed. Things are getting exposed. They don't want Caitlin coming in and changing the game on an international level. You know what I'm saying? How would that make the others look? It's not going to make the other players. She ain't won. And she going to come to the Olympics and show out. I say basketball committee, committee probably thinking this probably thinking we can't let this girl come to come to international soil and show out. We can't have that. And that's actually the problem. And actually, it's a very, very big problem, as we see. It boils all back around to what I initially said. Caitlin Clark is polarizing. And the WNBA and women's basketball doesn't know how to handle it. And they don't know what to do. This is why they, people should always say, be careful what you ask for. Sometimes you ask for it and it comes in a different package than you, than you asked for it. And now you're rejecting they it. They sound like, yeah, we want the game changed, but we don't want her to do it. That's, that's, that's how they sound. That's the vibe they're giving. I mean, what's, why couldn't it be Breonna Stewart? Like, Breonna Stewart won four chance. Why couldn't it be this person? Why, why couldn't it have been this person? This is, this is what people sound like right now. And this is definitely how people are acting. People, like myself included, love Caitlin Clark. They don't believe in Caitlin Clark. That's what it is. When you go and put an injured player on the list over who you think is the future of women's basketball, and you go and put the injured player over that player, that, that's all you need to know right there. That whole Caitlin will keep her head up. It's hard being the first. Let me, let me say this last thing. Caitlin Clark fans, understand that the Indiana Fever are a horrifically bad team. Don't tune out. If you are a Caitlin Clark fan, Continue to watch Caitlin Clark and do what she does. Ignore the noise. Just go and be a fan of Caitlin Clark because I believe she is just getting started. And you're going you're gonna to appreciate like, oh, man, I remember Caitlin's rookie year, man. And she was da 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 Look at her now. Same thing it was in college. That's why Caitlin can trust the process. Because we weren't all talking about her like this her freshman year. Some of y'all weren't. Stay with her. I am believing and praying that the Indiana Fever will clean house in this offseason.
Because Caitlyn is playing with a bunch of players that are not really for her. And the bottom line of it is, when you get a player like Caitlyn and these type of players, you got to get players that buy in, teammates, and even and get rid of the coach. Guys, so be patient. Let's see what they do in this offseason. If you're new to the WNBA, and be patient. Yes, the Indiana Fever, they are a very, very bad organization. Caitlin Clark went to the worst possible situation. Like, there's a reason why teams continue to win, and there's a reason why teams continue to lose. It's not like Indiana hasn't been relevant for the last year or two. Indiana has not been relevant since 2016. They haven't been relevant for eight years, yet they've been getting high picks. Think about it. Do the math. It's a bad franchise. So either Caitlin is going to level it up like she does everything, and she's going to create change, positive change, or she's going to be out of there. All I'm saying is, if you are a Caitlin Clark fan, if she ain't checked out, you shouldn't check out. Stay with the process. You guys got to understand how the WNBA is and that Caitlin went to the absolute worst team that you could possibly go to in the WNBA. The absolute worst. She continues to get the hardest role. I know why the man above gives me the hardest role, but... Always perseveres. So if you're a Caitlin Clark fan, ignore the noise, keep following, keep supporting. It's the